Okay. So I got this comment the other day that kind of sums up what a lot of people are dealing with. I enabled VT from BIOS, but still VBS is showing disabled in Windows. And hmm, yeah, that's a common issue. Even when VT or virtualization is enabled, Windows doesn't always activate virtualization based security. But don't worry, I'll walk you through everything step by step in simple language. You won't need to be a full blown tech wizard for this, but if you are, You'll definitely enjoy the deep dive too. And oh, before we jump in, um, if this video helps you out even a little bit, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more smart Windows fixes and troubleshooting like this. It really helps the channel grow. And yeah, I appreciate you. All right, let's get into it. So first of all, even if VT is enabled, there are other things that need to be lined up for VBS to actually turn on. Start by double checking your BIOS or UEFI settings. Hmm, yeah, I know you already enabled VT, but still make sure these other settings are also properly configured. You'll want secure boot enabled, TPM 2.0 turned on, and if you're on Intel, VTD should be enabled, or AMD Vi if you're on AMD. These are kind of like the support crew behind the main virtualization system, so if even one is off, VBS might refuse to start. Then inside Windows, go ahead and search for Turn Windows Features On or Off. Once that window opens, just scroll and make sure things like Hyper-V, Virtual Machine Platform, and Windows Hypervisor Platform are turned on. These are optional features, but for VBS to work smoothly, at least the Hypervisor Platform needs to be active. Hmm. Now, if those features are already turned on and it still says VBS is disabled, you might want to poke around in group policy, especially if you're on Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise. So just press Windows plus R type gpedit.msc and hit enter. Then go to computer configuration, then administrative templates, then system and inside that, click on device guard. Double click the option that says turn on virtualization based security and set it to enabled. You'll also see a few config options under it like credential guard. Feel free to keep those on default unless you know exactly what you're adjusting. Now, hmm, let's say you're using Windows Home Edition where group policy isn't available. In that case, we can do it from the registry. Press Windows plus R, type regedit, and go to this path. I'll mention that in the description or pin comment, check that out. Once you're here, create a new DORD 32-bit value called Enable Virtualization Based Security and set it to 1. And if it's already available, then no need to create another one. This tells Windows to turn VBS on, even if the GUI or other services aren't playing along. Restart your PC once. Once all that's done, press Windows plus R again, type MSI NFO 32, and hit Enter. Scroll down and look for the line that says Virtualization Based Security. If everything worked, it should now say Running. But, hmm, if it still shows Not Enabled even after all that, then yeah, we're probably looking at some sort of compatibility block. Now here's the thing, VBS heavily depends on something called memory integrity, which is part of Windows Security's core isolation settings. And if there's any incompatible driver installed on your system, it'll block memory integrity from working and in turn block VBS too. So here's what you should do. Open start, type core isolation and open it. Look under memory integrity. If it's turned off and there's a warning about incompatible drivers, Click on Review Incompatible Drivers. Scroll down and you'll see the actual file name or driver that's causing the issue. Could be anything, from an old virtualization tool, some outdated utility, or even something weird like a game mod or third-party system tool. Now if you're a little techie, these driver incompatibilities are fixable. I've actually covered how to deal with them before, so you can check the memory integrity section for more details. Once you find the culprit, just uninstall it or update it if there's a newer version. After that, restart your system and try enabling memory integrity again. But mm, if the issue still doesn't go away and the reason turns out to be your hardware itself, then yeah, it might not fully support VBS or related features like TPM or Secure Boot. In that case, honestly, I'd recommend switching your system to MBR partition style. With MBR, you can disable all those strict requirements, Secure Boot, TPM, UEFI, all that. When you install Windows using MBR, it doesn't rely on VBS or modern hardware requirements. It's more flexible and tends to run smoother on older systems. And yes, um, I've already made a dedicated video on why MBR is better than GPT for many users, especially if you're on older or budget hardware. 
I'll leave that link down in the description so you can check it out. But if you're not into technical stuff, seriously, just stick to Windows 10 with MBR. It's more stable, has better compatibility, and performs better overall on most non-modern hardware setups. Trust me, you won't be missing out on much. All right, hmm. I hope this helped clear things up and gave you a few solid directions to fix the issue. If you're still stuck or see a weird driver name under memory integrity, drop it in the comments. I'll help you out personally. And yeah, if you found this helpful, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell so you don't miss the next fix I post here on Windows Fixer. Catch you in the next one. Allah Hafiz.